good morning. If you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, gather round. Are you ready to sing, Rainbow? Okay. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, please sit down. <laughs> you're a funny boy. You are a funny boy. We're going to read a story about one of your cousins today, I think. Yeah. A little lady named a sea serpent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope that you're having a good week. Miss Kim is having a pretty good week. She's happy to say. And you might notice Miss Kim has glasses back. We'll see if they manage to make it through the whole story time. I don't think they're adjusted quite right, so I might have to <laughs> take them off. I don't know. We'll see which ones are, which way it's better to read. But we're finally here. <laughs> All right, well, today is the letter S. S. S is kind of fun to say. S. Makes you sound like a snake. S. <laughs> ah. And you know what? Our silly song where we shake our sillies out is all about S, so we don't need to change it for today. So let's do it, okay? We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. And wiggle our waggles away. We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. And wiggle our waggles away. Yay! Yep, no need to change that one up at all. <laughs> Okay, so Miss Kim is going a little silly today. What sound does S make? We just talked about it a little bit. It makes that sound that sounds like a snake. S -s -s. Can you do that? It's fun to do. S -s -s. Don't spit when you do it. <laughs> and at the beginning of words and in the middle of words, it usually sounds. S -s. Sometimes when we combine it with other letters. It might sound a little bit different, like the word school. You get the sk, sk, but there's definitely sk, school. We say them fast, so it sounds like you might be saying it a little bit different, but no, nope. sk. <laughs> so let's see what some of our words are. Let's do our names, okay? Girls' names, Sue, with the long form, Susan, Sarah, this one that I picked out, I went to school with a girl named Shelva. That is not a name that you hear very often, but it's definitely a nest name, Shelva. For boys, Stuart, Stephen. Okay, because I also went to school with a pair of twins whose names were Stuart and Stephen. And then maybe Sam, which is short for Samuel. Lots of S names. Other words that start with S. Let's talk about food. There are so many S words. If you ever play a game and you're bigger where they want you to guess the letters that like words start with, always start with S because it's one of the most common, that means it happens a lot, um, letter that words start with. I mean, so many things here. So I just, we're going to have more than three for each, okay? So Foods that start with S, stew, squash, spaghetti. There's even spaghetti squash. <laughs> Strawberries, star fruit. <laughs> uh, let's see, things that start with S. Snow, sun, shovels, sand, stars, seeds. Uh, let's see, stones, sisters. All those start with S. And animals. So many animals start with S. Swans, sharks.
if I can remember when I get there, we're doing Baby Shark today. I was going to do a different song to go with our art, but we have to do Baby Shark. <laughs> I hope I can remember. <laughs> I haven't listened to it in a while. Sea Serpents. You can't see because our sea serpent's head's the other end, but this is a sea serpent. <laughs> Snakes, snails, squirrels, skunks. We go on and on. There's just so many S words. <laughs> and then when we make a word mean more than one, the word for that is plural. When you say dog, but you want to talk about more dogs, you put an S at that. So S is one of the most commonly used letters in our alphabet. Lots of S's out there. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we have. The two books that I'm not reading. Mrs. McNosh and the Great Big Squash. I was all set to read this if some of my books didn't come in, but I've read this um, to you guys back when I was just doing um, single uh, reading books online. Pretty here back when we were all locked down and staying in their homes. But it's a really fun book. Uh, this is my copy, but there are copies in the library system, not here at our library. But And this, I thought maybe we were going to actually get April full snow. We didn't. Some people north of us did get snow. So I thought it might be appropriate to read Tracks in the Snow. <laughs> this is a really cute book, so I hope to get to use it um, next year when we have a snowy day or something. I really like this book, but we didn't get our April Fool's snow here. So <laughs> I am going to read this beautiful book called A Stone Sat Still. This book is so beautiful to look at the artwork in it. Um, you might want to come in and check it out. It's from the James B. Brown Library, but we can always get it for you. It's just a beautiful book. It makes you want to go out and be in nature. And that is never a bad thing. Take a book, though. It's fun to read outside. <laughs> and our book that goes with our craft project, The Sea Serpent and Me. Now, this is a little bit longer book. This is a pretty short book, so I think they'll go good together. But um, this is a nice story about some friends. So I think we'll have fun with this. Although sometimes... <laughs> well, I won't ruin the surprise. All right, so we're going to start. I just realized I forgot our things for our, our game to talk about. So I'm just going to have to talk about it with you. But I think you guys have good imaginations. There's nothing too complicated about our game. <laughs> I just wanted to have some props to show you. But <laughs> they're running a little bit late this morning. Kim had to write an email right before she came back here to talk to with all of you. So I'm going to start out with my glasses. If you see me take them off, it's because <laughs> I can't see. All right. A stone sat still. Make sure you look at all the beautiful pictures. I'm going to try and show them to you as best I can. That's a big book, so it's a little difficult. Stone sat still. And there's our big show. I think I can make it through this book with my glasses on. We'll see. All the pictures are so big. Big. Anyway, I can get so I can read it. A stone sat still with water, grass, and dirt. And it was as it was, where it was in the world. There's somebody on our stone. And the stone was dark. And the stone was bright. When the moon shone on it, it glowed. And the stone loud. What's happening here? The seagulls and the birds are dropping their, the things that they want to eat on the stone to break them open. It's making noise. 
and the stone was quiet. Look who's here on our stone. I'll show you close. A little quiet snake sunning himself. And it sat where it sat with the water and the grass and the dirt and it was as it was where it was in the world. And the stone was rough. The same stone was smooth. Just depends on how big you are, whether it's rough to the little snail or smooth to the bigger porcupine. Here's four pictures. I'm going to bring them in close so you can see them. And the stone was green and the stone was red. And purple and blue. The light makes things look different colors sometimes. Oh, there's a big picture. Oh my goodness. Can I get everybody in here? Wow. Do you guys know what that is? That's a moose. And the stone was a pebble because he's so big. It's like a pebble to him. And the stone was a hill. It's hard to see our stone in this picture. It's so big because this little guy is so small. It's like a big hill to him. <laughs> oh, look at the raccoons. And the stone was a feel. And the stone was a smell. All sorts of things. And you know, the whole time, the stone is just sitting there, like we said. And it sat where it sat with water and grass and dirt. And it was what it was, where it was in the world. And the stone was the wild, and stone was a home. Just depends. And the stone was a kitchen, <laughs> and the stone was a throne. Oh, activity of this stone. <laughs> this one. And the stone was a marker. And the stone was a map. And the stone was a maze. Danger, a haven, I can't see. a story, and a stage. I can't see. <laughs> you can see it. And the stone was a blink. Moving very quick. And the stone was an age. Hmm, something very old that's lived forever. Okay, top picture. And the stone was an island. See how it's like an island? And the stone was a wave. 
How's it a wave? When the water goes over it, it makes waves from the water on the other on the other side. Big beautiful gray. And the stone was a memory. Mm. And the stone was always. As long as I thought. Yep. <laughs> have you ever known such a place? I think I have. Think about it. Have you? Is there a special stem place? Maybe a tree? Where with water, grass, and dirt, Stone sits still in the world. It's a different type of book, but it was very beautiful and something to think about. Okay, we're gonna try to do Baby Shark. I'm trying to remember all the Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Baby Shark. You know what? We're going to do what Miss Kim remembers of the shark, okay? <laughs> because I like it better than the song I had. <laughs> do we start with, I think we start with the big sharks and work our way down to baby shark. So we go, grandpa shark, do 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 do, grandpa shark, do 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 do, grandpa shark, do 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 do, grandpa shark. Daddy shark to do to do to do daddy shark to do to do to do daddy shark to do to do to do daddy shark Mama shark to do to do to do mama shark to do to do to do mama shark to do to do to do mama shark Baby shark to do to do to do baby shark to do to do to do baby shark to do to do to do baby shark we really wish I had thought of that earlier. I know there is another line that goes with that, and I cannot remember what it is. But the fun part is to do the baby shark. So, <laughs> and our books are running a little long, so we will. I know I've now made it an earworm, so you'll want to go look it up or sing it if you know it better than Miss Kim. <laughs> All right. So, beginning first. That was silly. Okay. You know what? I think while we're breaking, I'm going to talk about our game and then we'll read the book and we'll go right from our book into our sea serpent, okay? So the game is called Cotton Ball Scoop. There's our S word, scoop. Take cotton balls. You guys know what cotton balls are. Little balls of cotton. If you don't have those, you could like maybe take some toilet paper and roll it up into little balls, but cotton balls are perfect and you can Use them when you're done with the unless you make them really dirty. Cotton balls, spread them out on a table. And then you're going to put a bowl or a container, you know, something like this, something that you can put things in, in the center. And then you need a spoon. You probably only need one spoon because I think one person, it's best if you play this with one person at a time. So you just need cotton balls, one container, one spoon. And you need to close your eyes, cover your eyes with your hand, get a bandana or something to cover your eyes so that um, the person can't see. No need to spin around or anything like that. <laughs> um, and if, if you've really little children and you're doing this, it's probably enough of a challenge for them to scoop these up if, while they are able to see them. But for older kids, cover your eyes. Give them a spoon and they have to try and in a minute, remember, see how many cotton balls they can scoop up with a spoon and put into the container. Now, they're blindfolded. If that's really hard the first time around, then you know that take off the blindfold and do it because this is not easy to begin with. And no, you're not like helping with your other hand. You have to scoop them with your spoon. 
doesn't say scoop them with your spoon in your hand. Little, little children. But, so, there are different ways to play that. Also, you could just see how long it takes you to get all of the cotton balls. Time it that way. All sorts of ways to switch that up to play. But have fun with the scooping game. Okay. I never read this book until this morning, and it was the only book in the system that seemed to be out about sea serpents that was the right length for you guys. So, but I have read it, and I know how it ends. And I almost didn't read it. It's just one of those sweet, sad endings. It's good. But <laughs> it made me become a little, a little teary. I was like, do I want to read that in front of everybody? <laughs> so, nothing bad happens. It's all good. Sometimes good things make you cry a little bit. And that's okay. So, let's see if I keep the glasses on for this. Okay. Okay, here's our picture. This is our little girl. And she's meeting her sea serpent for the first time. Let's switch here. Okay. On Tuesday, I was about to climb into the bath. As I was about to climb into the bath, a sea serpent dropped out of the faucet and into the tub. He was very beautiful. He was a very beautiful sea serpent, so small, I could hold him in my hands. In the bath, we played together. I made soap dish into a Viking ship, and he knocked it over with his tail. And then we made waves and splashed each other until the water covered the floor. When it was time to get out, I scooped him up and put him in the fish tank next to my bed. And it says, oh, sorry, I'm here. Sometimes it's find it hard to find the writing. It's hidden in the picture. How did you get here? I asked him that night. Don't sea serpents belong in the sea? He told me a tornado had lifted him into the clouds one day. Oh my, here's the picture. The clouds drifted over green jungles and silvery cities. And then it rained him down into a lake where a pipe sucked him up and whooshed him along and splashed him down into my tub. Well, do you miss the sea? I asked him. Of course I do. I belong there. Then I'll take you back, I said. But it was rainy on Wednesday. Too rainy for the beach. My sea serpent was sulky. Sea serpents belong in the sea, he said. Well, we'll try again tomorrow, I promised. But for today, the house can be your beach. Later, we went swimming in the bathtub, but it suddenly felt crowded. I think you're growing, I said. He smiled. Well, of course I am. Once I was as small as a drop of rain. Soon I will be as big as a wave. Hmm. That night, as I lay in bed, he sang me a song about the deep blue sea where manta rays swim like dancing blankets, and there are crabs with antlers and fish shaped like guitars. Can you see the guitar fish? <laughs> On Thursday, it was still raining and my sea serpent had grown. How big do sea serpents get? I asked him. Oh, we get as big as the ocean is deep and as long as the current is strong. The big ones are as big as a very small island, and the small ones are as big as a whale. Hmm. A 
Oh, I said, that big. By bedtime, my sea serpent was too large for the fish tank. So I put him back in the tub. I wish I could still sleep next to your bed, he said, when I kissed him goodnight. That night, I heard him singing his song about the creatures of the deep blue sea, and I sort of wanted it to be sunny in the morning, and I sort of wanted it to rain. When Friday came, it was still raining, and my sea serpent was so long that his tail was resting in the sink. If you get any bigger, I won't be able to carry you to the beach, I told him. When you think about it, he answered, the rain isn't any wetter than the ocean. Oh, I said, good point. So I brought him down to the windy shore and dragged him through the sand until the water lapped my toes. In case you're wondering, it's a little hard to see them. And I don't know if you can still see it. She's taking him in a wagon. And here's his picture. My sea serpent dove and came up splashing, dove in and came up splashing. Look how big I am, he yelled. I can touch the bottom with my tail. You are very big, I said, remembering how I used to hold him in my hands. Then the sun came out and we swam together. We rode the waves as if they were horses. He floated as gently as star er, and floated as gently as stars in the sky. Lots of words. But people need towels and dry clothes and dinner, and sea serpents belong in the sea. I guess it's time to say goodbye, I said. When the sun sank and sank low and pink in the sky, my sea serpent looked at the green, green ocean that stretched way out to the edge of the world. And very big, he said, but the sea is a lot bigger. Maybe I should stay with you. I stroked his neck and almost said yes but soon he'd be as big as a wave. And I knew that he'd be happiest in the sea. I'll stay right here, I told him, and I will wait for you till you're ready. My sea serpent swam in the shallow water and I stayed beside him and talked about manta rays like dancing blankets and crabs with antlers and fish shaped like guitars. You'll have adventures, I said. You'll see shipwrecks and sharks and schools of fish like bouquets of flowers. But what if I'm lonely? My sea serpent asked. You won't be lonely. You'll play with the sea lions and the otters and whales will sing with you. And when you're tired, the waves will rock you to sleep.
Remember when I was little, he asked? How I slept in a fish tank next to your bed? Of course I do, I said. He snored. My sea serpent smiled. I am not so little anymore, he said. And then he added, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I kissed his head and he swam away. That night I opened my window and listened to the sea. I could hear the waves and the laugh of a gull and I thought that I could hear my sea serpent singing. So I listened until I fell asleep. It's a good kind of sad. <laughs> And that's why I wasn't sure if I should read it. <laughs> but it's such a beautiful story. So I wanted to share beautiful illustrations and beautiful idea. And that's the way stories are. They tell you all sorts of things and let you experience all sorts of things, feelings and emotions. So, <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're going to make a silly sea serpent. Let's then turn this and get our sea serpent in the picture and me in the picture. We're doing wrong here today. <laughs> Hard to say. <laughs> I mean, I just need to bring this closer. Try not to run into it. If I only could leave this set up all the time, it would be a lot easier to do this every week to figure out how to put it together. So let's bring our sea serpent over here so you can see. Now, the bun in our book was a lot more beautiful. This is a sort of a strange looking sea serpent here. Right, let's take a look at that. I've not been happy with my sea serpent's ears, nor the mouth, but doing what we're doing, this is probably the easiest. If you come up with a more creative idea for this whole part of it, you go right ahead. <laughs> let's see if I put it there. Let's put it up here. You can still see it more or less. <laughs> well, I guess it's going to be at an angle. <laughs> okay. Now, if you looked at our craft beforehand, I made a note that making a letter S can be a little tricksy. Okay. I to take my paper out of my folder. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we could start with a whole green piece of paper, but I'm not going to because I have half is which is what I used for him. Okay, but if you only have a whole piece, you want to fold it in half and then cut that okay, until you have a half of a whole. Okay, and then this piece, need a work surface. Get... Oh, up there, that's a little better. It's just stick. <laughs> Take your whole piece, fold it in half. Okay. All right. Now, it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be, and I think some of my letters have actually been harder than this one, so. Now, of course, this is not a fancy S. It's just a very simple S. Once you're starting to learn how to write letters, you'll find out that S's can be both fun and a little difficult to get right. Just depends on the day, I think. Okay. We're going to cut up. We're going to make a big curve, okay? And you want it, I'm going to say it, but you want it to be a little bit angled more, not straight up and then just cutting off the corners. So it makes a wider. So this. You want that a little bit, okay? <laughs> Whatever you get will work. And you want to, yes. If you start cutting from the bottom, the open bottom, okay, it'll be a lot easier um, to cut it apart. So, 
Okay. You're going to cut right across that line. And the paper's going to fall on the floor. <laughs> and then, oh, oops, nope, I want to get more of an angle. If you've got some paper to spare, this is probably one of those ones where you want to keep trying until you get happy with it. Just don't throw away all your bits and pieces because you can always use them later. Okay, I'm not totally happy with that. When you do it right, you've cut off the, the folded part. So, yep, okay. Something that looks like this. Okay, keep them together. And now what we're going to do is cut the inside of the curve out, okay? If you wanted to, if you want to make art, a little bit more art, you can do this on a smaller scale so that it'll fit on paper. You make smaller ones of these and make more. We're making an S. But you could make it keep one, make it look <laughs> like a really long, wiggly sea serpent. And you could add different head shape. I'm going to play with that head shape today, I think. I don't like the one I have. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe we'll add something to it with our green. Anyways. Want to make it like a finger joint wide? And try to keep it the same thickness all the way around your curve. If it's not perfect, that's fine. But you don't want to get it like really skinny or really fat. Unless you want to. Okay. And you got a thing like this. And then when you put them together, ha -ha, let it rest. Save your paper. Save it especially because I think that we're going to try and make it have a little bit of less weird looking head. <laughs> it's bothered me since yesterday. <laughs> so we got our blue piece of paper. And we do like this. Okay. Uh, and see how much I'm overlapping that? Make, well, you could do this. But it really takes up most of the page. So I'm gonna like overlap them when you glue them so that it's not so big. And of course you're gonna put one on first and then the other. And all of our spikes or a lot of them are tucked in behind. So keep that glue right in the center when you're gluing. So it leaves this loose for us to stick all the all of its bits and pieces, okay? This doesn't want to stick there. Should check that earlier. Okay. Glue stamp. All right. Scissors out of the way. Okay. First glue one. And look how Miss Kim is doing it. So, um, it doesn't really matter which way you want to make it, but if you want to do what I do, the first one is going to go down like that. Okay? It doesn't matter which side you glue on in this one because this is the first one. I'll have to pay attention when you glue the second one because if you glue the wrong side of it, it won't glue together right and you'll have, um, well, you won't have an S. <laughs> I want to leave room over here for some spiky stuff. Maybe turn it a little bit of an angle. And run your finger where you put the glue. Okay. Now this one is going to go where that one. And you might want to play with this before you glue. Okay. Okay. I can't even see that. So once you realize where you want it, okay, you're like, okay, I like this end on this end. When you put it down to glue, you gotta turn it over. So from here, don't just slide it, turn it over. Otherwise you're gonna be gluing the wrong side. <laughs> it's a little hard to think about. That's why Miss Kim told you. Turn it over. 
And remember, you hear outside edges, not glued. Miss Kim did it right. There we go. There's our green sea serpent. So our sea serpent in the story was a boy. For some reason, I always think of sea serpents as girls when I make sea serpents out of polymer clay. I always give them girl names. I don't know why. <laughs> I just do. So I think this is where we're going to change our sea serpent. We need to do it. I think we need to give him a head that looks more like a horse. So let's see what we can do. Maybe we can take our rounded, some more rounded pieces here. And let's see if we can make an oval. Okay. Oh, 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 I like that. So if you can work out something like that, you can always do what Miss Kim did. That's perfectly fine. But I am liking our little, I'm going to even push it, put it down a little bit so he looks like he's looking down. Now here I am saying he. <laughs> so I'm going to glue that. We're still going to use the same sort of mouth, unless you want to draw like a red mouth on or something. But I'm still going to try and do the cutout mouth. That would be a little interesting, I just realized. But I guess we'll tackle that when I get to it. Here's our little sea serpent. And I'm putting it back so that you can't see the end of the S. Okay. Very good. Okay. Like that. And if I were to redo it, I'd probably cut off the end of this and make it a little curved, just so it looks less edgy. Okay, there's our basic S and our C serpent. Next thing I did do with this glue with my star. <laughs> Next thing I did was the mouth. Now, if you're doing this one, I basically I took a straight edge because we're going straight up the side, and I'll show you however big you or wide you want the mouth. So let's do it from here where. I just cut a triangle. I'll show you. We make it big, small. And then I just put it, I'll show them like this. Just ran it to the edge. Okay. But it's not going to work for our round headed sea serpent. And I don't think I want it to be as big. So I trimmed it a little bit. And then. I'm curving it just, oops, just a little bit so that when I glue it, it's curved. I guess you will not be able to see that till I do it. So <laughs> I'm going to get glue all over that. And then you get it all over your finger. There's our big sea serpent now. It's they need a big mouth to eat all the stuff that they eat. And getting it lined up before the glue sets is always fun. Okay, there we go. Big sea serpent mouth. And I used a Google Eye because Google Eyes are fun. Still going to use that. Try to use it. Okay, glue stick. Anytime you want it to make your big lumpy mouth, it doesn't. <laughs> And glue on the back of the eye. There we go. Okay, so you just need one last little bit of green for some ears. Because I always like my sea serpents to have ears. Let's see, I'm going to use the corner of this thing. And it's not quite such big ears. Little triangles. Mm -hmm. so them like that. I'm going to stop and glue them right now. 
You see how his little ears are there? You can make your ears look whatever you want to. Big, floppy, little, tiny, no ears. I like the kind of Shrek look in here. So we're done with our red. For the mouth. And I didn't say it to begin with, but I will say it again. Remember, you don't have to make your sea serpent the color Miss Kim made her sea serpent. You can make your sea serpent any color you want to, and you can make it women a pink ocean if you want to. <laughs> All right. So I like the contrast of yellow. So I'm using yellow for my spikes. Spikes are just big triangles, okay? Usually long, skinny triangles. So basically I cut a big rectangle like that. First one I cut off at an angle and usually don't use that one. Cut, okay, hold it. Triangle. Oh, that's nice. Just stuck my hand in the glue. <laughs> Okay, triangle, and you just keep flipping it over and then making more triangles. And if they're too long, you cut off the wide bottom and make them shorter. And there's my last one, I cut it from the whole end. Okay, now there's some key places to put all our triangles. One is here for some slippery type things to help them swim. And if you don't have enough triangles, just make some more. So, and you want to put one under and then one. It's not pretty on top, so it looks like one behind and one on the side that's near you, okay? It's called perspective. And the ones that can't get a hold of it, there. the ones you're gluing underneath, you really only need to put glue at the big fat end and then stick it underneath. It doesn't need to be glued all the way down. There we go, that one right there. And you can do the same with the ones that stick a pot too. They don't need to be. It gives them a little bit more life looking when they're not all just stuck flat to the page. So there. And I think we definitely want some at our tail. I just like those. I might want to add some here. I didn't choose to, but you could. You can put them wherever you want to. You don't even have to put these ones where I'm saying. And I kind of put them at an angle instead of straight up and down. Makes them look a little bit more lifelike, I think. There we go. And I put a whole bunch here. I think I have enough to do that. Let's see, I can't, I dropped them on top of my yellow piece of paper. I can't see them. I do, I have four. I think that's good, four. Again, just glue in the end. Maybe put the ones at the ends a little angly. Almost done with our awesome sea serpent. And and then this was all I had to begin with, but I added these and these, I, a little bit smaller ones. Um, if you still have big ones left, like you said, you can trim the, the big part off, the wide part off. But since I'm making more, I'm just going to cut shorter ones. Okay. One. If I do what I'm doing, I want one, two, three, four, five, six. And the two that are on the bottom are even tinier, but we know how to make those, right? Just cut off the bottom. I think that was six. One. Two. 
to down in that little curve. Breathe. If you were wondering what other song I was going to sing besides Baby Shark, I was going to do a play on Sally the Camel has five humps. I was going to do Sally the Sea Serpent has five humps. Why isn't that? I can't talk apparently and do this. It doesn't want to slide under there. No, I'm not using that one. I've wrinkled it all up now. Okay. Right. I was gonna do <laughs> I was gonna do Sally the Sea Serpent has five humps, because I thought that would be fun. Uh, you know, Sally the Sea Serpent has five humps. Sally the Sea Serpent has five humps. Sally the Sea Serpent has five humps. And, and swim, Sally, swim. <laughs> So that's one that you can sing at home. And of course, she just keeps going down in, in numbers of humps. But unlike Sally the Camel's horse, of course, she's still just a sea serpent because sea serpents can have a number of humps and bumps and wumps. So <laughs> Sally's a sea serpent, of course. <laughs> there we go. Now, it's one last finishing touch. If you had a crayon, or a nice marker that you feel comfortable using. You can, I'm going to pull my original picture down so you can see. So I can see, it a see these little marks? Those would be the scales on our sea serpent. Okay. And it's just like a little curved line, but you want to make sure that the curve, the round of the curve, is towards the back because that will help the water go over our sea serpent. If, they, if the curve goes this way towards the front of our sea serpent, that's where the water would go underneath it and that would keep her from swimming. So, took my crayon and gave just some. And of course, you don't have to do it. I think it makes a nice little touch. There we go. You could give her a nose. You might like to add teeth to your sea serpent. I did add teeth to this sea serpent because it looked a little funny, but I kind of like the way this one looks without teeth, so that's up to you. All right. Oh my. Our stories were long today. We need to get going. Somebody's probably going to want me to go back to work. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you'll join us again next week. We're all the way up to the letter T. There's another really popular letter. There's going to be lots of things that start with T. <laughs> if we have time, we'll get into them. All right. So. It is time to say our goodbyes. So see you later, alligator. There's our C F C yeah, like C. It sounds like you're saying the letter C, but it's not. It's C. Yes. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. You be a sweet parakeet. Give a hug, ladybug. See you soon, real soon, raccoon. Out the door, dinosaur. You take care, polar bear. And blow a kiss, blow a fish. Okay, remember to come back next week. Letter T. Also, I just remembered, I wanted to remind you all that today is April Fool's Day. It's a good day to tell a joke or do a little prank or try to trick somebody. But do it nice, don't hurt anybody. I remember when I was wee little and I had a cat. And his name was Shiner. I thought I would, I would try and pull a practical joke on him. And I, I said to him, 
one of my favorite ways to tell a practical joke is to tell you that something is true that's not or try to make you look out a window or something like that. Those are fun. You know, look out the window. There's a dinosaur out there. <laughs> so I said to my cat, look, your paw's on backwards. <laughs> he didn't seem to really react, but... Anyways, today is April Fool's Day. We didn't get our April Fool's Day snow, but maybe you can fool somebody to say, hey, look outside, it's snowing, or something like that. Those are always fun, and they don't hurt anybody, and they just make everybody laugh. So I wanted to tell you, or to remind you about that. So, all right. It is time to say goodbye. <laughs> so long, farewell, Avida saying goodbye. We'd like to stay. But we must say goodbye. Goodbye. See you later.